All right, Johns, how are we? We good, deep joy. New episode of the In You Get podcast. This guest is none other than a two-time Sports Journalist of the Year award winner. Two years on the trot, Johns, giving it large. Avid Arsenal fan. French Bulldog lover. You know I love me French Bulldogs. If there's a sporting event, boxing, football, she is there. Spraying a bottle of Chateau Neuf de Kim at Bagatelle, London, or in Ocean Beach with Uncle Wayne. Oh, she is there. And you're thinking, who could it be? Is it Sue Barker? Gabby Logan? No, don't be fucking stupid. It's none other than Laura Woods. So if you want to see what we get up to in the back of me cab, subscribe to the Patreon, and in we get. Bosh! Woodsy. Aaron. How are you, darling? Very well, how are you? Yeah, what are you getting nervous for? Do you know what? It's not nerves, it's like anticipation and excitement. It's the effect that you have on women, Aaron. It's, it's, the, it's the unknown, isn't it? It's What's the it going to be like? Yeah, yeah, I don't like this this way round for me. No? It's different because normally I'm asking the questions, so. That's it, yeah, yeah. I'm so out of my comfort zone. I'm fucking under pressure now, aren't I? You are, I'm going yeah. to mark you out of 10. Yeah, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm having a job interview. <laughs> Literally. But how are you? So who we got with you? Who's, this who's is Lulu. Today? So Lulu. Lulu a minute ago was sat next to me, but the definition of a lap dog, she has manoeuvred herself onto my lap. Which, does, uh, does she molt? She molts like a bitch. Yeah. And honestly, like, I'm really sorry. It's everywhere right no, now. That's fine. I'll have a little tidy up before I I'll take it out your feet later on. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. If we've agreed a feet. <laughs> Um, so what are you up to now? Like, what are you doing with your life at the uh, minute? Do you know what? Like, we've just finished the season and... I am like so about trying to work a bit less at the moment yep. because I've just got myself into this period of, of work where I just work all the time and um, I love it, don't get me wrong, and it's a wicked job, but it does take a lot out of you. So yeah, end of the season and I kind of promised myself this summer that I would just take some time off. The, f the thing is as well, you don't just do football. Yeah. Like you've got your, your yeah. fingers in all kinds of pies, like disown. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like you're doing your boxing, you're doing all kinds of yeah. stuff. Um, what do you enjoy the most doing though? Do you know what? I get asked this question quite a lot about like TV, radio, sport, boxing. What I do really love, and I think it's probably my personality is a bit like this. I like the, the mix. Yep. So like I'll wake up at four, I'll go do the radio, I'll do that four days a week. And I love it, which is the reason I get up that early, because otherwise there's no, oh, you're right. There's no reason I would get up at 4 a.m. for anything mm -hmm. other than just really loving it. And to be honest, like, you get a mix, so you get to do the radio, you get to cover all sports on the radio, you yep. get to talk to all sorts of people on the radio as well, and just have a bit of a laugh. Radio gives you like this real space. It gives you space and time that you don't get on any other medium, yep. I don't think, anyway. Um, do you, it, do you find that there's some sports, though, that you've got to talk about and you think that you're at your comfort zone? Or oh, 100%, you, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the best thing to do is be honest about it because my listeners will listen and be like, I know you don't like golf. And I'm like, you're right. <laughs> yeah. I just know they hit the ball on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, like, But I actually, but, but I'll do things. Like, for example, like I'll go and I'll, I'll have a lesson or something like that and I want to learn a little bit about it. Like, like when I got into boxing, for example, like I've, I've watched boxing for like a long time, but... Yeah. I've never watched it in the same way as an expert would watch it. And I've never worked to understand it in a deeper way other yeah. than just watching like the big fights, you know, like the main events. So I went and started boxing yeah. and I love it. And actually, I don't know if you do it, but I find it does wonders for your head as well. Yeah, it's like, nuts. Oh it's, a different, it's a different level of fitness as well. It puts it you is. places that you think, I didn't yeah. think I could do this. I was chatting to Tony Belly about it. And um, I said, in here, I said, there's going to be a few of those, I'm sorry. I was chatting to Tony Valley, you're waiting for the big one. This, yeah, yeah, this yeah. story is leading to a big one. And uh, I basically said, I said to Tony, because I stand there in that little studio and I watch it with him. And I watch what he's looking at and I'm, and I'm not looking for the same thing. And I'm like, it's annoying me because then when I ask him questions, I want to ask him good ones. So I was like, Tony, I think, I'll, I, think I want to learn how to box. And he was like, no. 
And I was like, no, 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 I'd like, I just want to do it. I don't want to actually. He's like, you're never sparring, you're never fighting. Yeah. I went, okay, I promise I won't, I won't take it to that degree, but yeah. I want to learn how to do it. Can you set me up with someone? He went, yeah, I know someone. I, my mate Chunky will do it for you. I went, okay, cool. So he texted his mate Chunky. He said, yeah, yeah, you live in the same place, you'll be fine. Anyway, he gave me his number. It's James DeGale. There you go, another James name DeGale. drop. Here we go, look. <laughs> So I'm now training with James Segal, but he's amazing. Does and he put, does he... Like, does he hit be, me? No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. If, d does he get to a point where, though, it's like, because because you're a woman, he doesn't want to push you t too hard, but or, or does he like, do you know what, if you want to get into this, yeah. and women fighters are fucking double brutal, hard. do you know what I mean? They're, yeah. yeah, they're double hard. Do, do you ask him to say, look, don't don't hold back on me, like get me to do what I need to do to get out of it, or do, does reckon, why are you doing it per se? Do you, just to understand it more? Yeah, I reckon we might. I don't know if we'll ever get to that stage, but the stage that we're at, at the moment is we basically we'll go in, we'll do, like, we're working up to 12 three minute rounds, but yep. but obviously how hard is it? It's so hard. Obviously, like I'm not fighting anyone. I'm I, literally he's just holding pads. Yeah. All I'm doing is hitting the pads, and then it gets to halfway through, and my arms start to go, and I'm like, and he wants me to like properly like jab with aggression, and yeah. I'm like, oh. yeah, put your and hip I, into yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. All that. Like get like a proper hook. Like that's not a hook. Give me a proper hook, and I'm like, oh my god. Does, but, it, get, does it get on your tits though when like you think that you're doing half all right and you're hitting the pads, and then they say, you yeah, know, you got to do better than oh, that? Oh yeah. What got really on my tits was he filmed me once. And I looked back at it and I was like, Did is you know that about what it, I though? look like? Did <laughs> no, you know I didn't about know. It was like no. someone in the bushes surreptitiously <laughs> filming me. And he was like, don't worry about that, carry on. Take more clothes off. No, I'm joking. <laughs> the lads, you know what, the lads and some of the birds watching this are going to be like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, honestly, he's so good. And what surprises me the most about him, he's brilliant. Like, we are doing very basic level. Like, yeah. we're just learning things. Like, very, very basic level training. But my head, like, the, the way that you have to... Your head is so engaged in it, and you can't miss a trick because otherwise, if you're not focused on all these combinations, yeah. like you're, you're not listening. You have, can't. You, have you done any sparring with someone? As no. in, like, so like any body sparring? No. Wait till you do that. Do you know what I've been doing? And I can only really get through three minutes, and I'm blowing out my ass. I mean, I'm carrying 17 stone, so I am blowing yeah, yeah. out my rear end. But but like body sparring, because you've got to concentrate on not getting hit. Yeah. Trying to be fucking Floyd Mayweather, <laughs> but then still yeah. manage to fire back with something. On, I, I take my hats off to him, and I've started to go into shows and stuff. So where I do my boxing at Dennis and Dyer, yeah. they they put on uh, they put on shows like every few months throughout the year, and they've got like 1,200 people there. What sort of shows? Like proper boxing shows. Are you doing it? No, nah, they want me to do it, but I, at go the on, minute, at the minute, I can't. Nah. Wouldn't that be fun, though? Yeah, I think everyone would be like, I just want to see and get the big shit out. <laughs> um, I probably will at some point, but just at the minute, I don't want to. I'm not good with pain. I have a cry when I shit, so. <laughs> I can't. Who would you like to fight? Who would I like to fight? Oh wow. Um, Tough question. I mean, Sadie Khan's up there. Boris Johnson's <laughs> up there. But I don't know. Boza, you and Boz are in the ring. Yeah. I'd pay to watch that, to be fair. You reckon? I reckon he'll do me. Have you ever seen him take out that kid? Uh, what, that charity game the, at the, the uh, soccer game. aid thing, wasn't it? <laughs> but he was in rugby mode, because all these posh fuckers like, are all into their rugby, aren't they? So then he just took them out like that. Um, so, like, sports broadcasting for you, mm. was that the avenue you always wanted to go down, or did you fall into it? What did you? Oh. Yeah, I think like when I was at uni, I used to want to be, I used to want to be a writer. Yep. I went to uni, and then when I was at uni, I was doing print journalism. I wasn't really enjoying it that much, yep. and I, I started looking at other courses at different unis, and I saw broadcast journalism at Bournemouth, and I called them up, and they said you haven't got the right grades to get in, right. so I couldn't switch. So I stayed doing that um, at Kingston print journalism. And then while I was there, like, I always wanted to combine. I was always the sporty kid at school, and I loved it. Yep. I used to play rugby when I was younger with my brothers. I've got two big brothers, so everything in my life pretty much revolved around sport. And then I, I never really realised that there was a way to combine the two together. Gotcha. And when I was at uni, I started doing these match reports for, like, our rugby team, football team, whatever. And they were, like, really bad match reports. I've still got them. They're really bad match reports. They're hilarious. Um, and they're like littered with spelling mistakes and they're shit. Um, but I really enjoyed it. And I liked the element of like going to a live sport, watching it, like enjoying it, and then your work being about it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I, I found a way into Sky Sports and um, the difference between print journalism, the work experience I'd done at print journalism, which was on the Croydon Advertiser, yep. and I hated it. It was like, oh, it was awful. Versus the work experience I got on Soccer AM at Sky Sports was mm -hmm. like night and day. And I was like so enthused about it, like <laughs> enthused. <laughs> what, that a, one? what a word that is. That's, that, that's not your upbringing at all. <laughs> not my just upbringing. be you. That's just one that I've, I've learned along the way. Um, I loved it. I just thought it was the most wild atmosphere and environment I when I walked into Sky. It was incredible. Everyone at Sky, they're all in their different groups, right? Mm. So you had like the cricket team, and there's all those sort of like cricket bods over there. And then you've got the rugby team and the football boys. And then you had my team, which was the pub sports team. Mm -hmm. And we covered darts, snooker, speedway, pool, nine ball pool, which we did in Vegas once every other yep, year. Yeah, yeah. It, was, like, it was insane. I loved it. So our team was like, our culture was a bit of a pub culture as well. Yeah, yeah. Everyone was just drinkers. Like, all, we'd, we'd work really hard, really long hours. We'd go and cover all these events. And then we'd drink all through the night until the next morning, and then we'd go straight back into work again. Is that what drew Suit you me. to doing like the presenting? You know the darts. Yeah, yeah. The PDC yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah, like, I so... loved it. I wanted. I always, when I was younger, I wanted to be. Do you remember News Round? Yeah. I wanted to be one of the press packers, and okay. I always applied, and they rejected me every time. Never Why did you think it. they rejected you? Ah, because I was a twat. Because I'm a woman. Because I'm a woman. Because I was a 12-year-old woman. Yeah. No, I just think I just think they had thousands and thousands of kids applying for it. Hello, and um, I just never got on. Never got on. But I really wanted to, and I remember watching all those shows. I remember watching Fern Cotton when I was little, and thinking that looks like fun. You... And I'm the youngest. I'm the youngest yeah. child, so there's like a bit of a. You got something to prove. Oh, like, yeah, exactly. Do you, did you ever think that you would be fucking like top dog? Like you won the sports journalist of the year all twice nice in a row. Nice. You've got that well <laughs> done. Like, did you ever think that you was going to reach the levels of Sue Barker and Gabby Logan? No. Or Gabby Yoroff, however you want to remember her. No, and I definitely haven't. I I don't even think I'm anywhere near those two. But I. Why? Why? Um. Because I watched them when I was little, and they were like... Um, yeah, but think like, of all the, the, the young girls that are aspiring to be the next Laura Woods. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like, amazing. do you see yourself as, like, the next presenter on Match of the Day? You uh, could be going that way. I mean, I would, I would love to... Would you do it? Yeah. Heart, like, in a heartbeat, I would do it. Yeah. The thing is, there's a little bit of fear, and you ask anyone in the industry, there's fear of, of being the next person to... You don't want to be the David Moyes. For the, for the Fergie, right? Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. And, um, oh, you need to find it out, sorry. Um, you, don't, you don't want to be that one, but I was that one for Alan Brazil, and, and yeah. yeah, it was hard, and it, and it was pretty horrible to begin with. The thing is, no one would have thought, after Des Lynham, Gary Lineker would have been yeah. what he is today, do you know and what you I mean? Know and what? you do need longevity yeah. in a job and given a chance. That, Gary Lineker said that exact, what you just said to me. Oh, really? That's what he said to me when I took over Alan. Yeah. Because I was like, no one, no one wants, no one likes change for a start. No one wants to see Alan Brazil go. I like this will make you laugh. I didn't want to see Alan Brazil go no. because I listened to him every day. Yeah. And I used to when I started working with him, it was, a, it was just like the best time of my life. It's that like, iconic voice, isn't it? Couldn't believe it. Yeah. yeah, couldn't believe it. Listened to it with my dad since I was little, since yeah. I can remember. My dad listened to Talk Sport from the minute it started. So Alan Brazil was this like nostalgic voice in my head. And then when I was the one to replace him, I was like. Even I didn't want that to happen, and did it's they, a really weird feeling. Did they ask feeling. you to do that, or did you put yourself forward, or did they no. say, like, they liked what you were doing, yeah. where you were going, they thought, yeah. it's a fucking, we need to go down. Well, it's either yeah. you or that fucking fat wanker, Jamie O'Hara, so... <laughs> Jamie. I know I'd rather listen to and probably watch. <laughs> I do love Jamie. He's good. But he's got he's, he's got on well, hasn't he? I mean, he's, he's come from great. the depths of yeah. shit, like, I don't yeah. know. Been with that fucking absolute rotter, and he's yeah, he's done. I tell you what, he's come he, out well. he is um, an absolute joy to work with. Yeah, because he's a really nice guy, and in the breaks we'll have our little counselling sessions, which are wonderful. But also he'll give you so much. So yeah. as a presenter, you'll find this now, right? You're working with someone, you're interviewing them. If they don't give you anything to work on or like to come back with. It's really hard, and you're all you're thinking about is like, shit. What's the next question? What's the next question? Yeah. Whereas Jamie will give you some of the most wildest opinions I've ever heard about football in my life, and and he will take the shit from me as well, yeah, yeah. and he'll give it back. Yeah. So we have like a bit of a kids relationship, like a brother and sisters relationship, yeah. where we can give each other ultimate shit, and it's. And are it's you fun. similar ages? Yeah, we are. I think he's a bit older than me. Yeah. I think he's probably I mean, about he looks three. <laughs> I mean, if I. Our biological ages are about 20 years apart, but like our actual ages, I think he's probably about three years older than me or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, like we're from the same kind of generation. We're both from Essex. 
Like, there's, there's probably a lot of similarities. But I just like him a lot. And what I like a lot about Jay as well is I bounce everything off my brothers. Yep. So, like, if their opinion is, is right in my... Well, if yep. my opinion is a certain thing and it's right in their heads, then it must be right, right. Yeah. And my oldest brother, Paul, listens to talk sport religiously as yeah. well. And uh, he loves Jamie. He loves do you, Jamie. Do you hold your brothers in such a high regard? Yeah. As well, you know, so like yeah. whenever they've got an opinion on, on anything that you're doing in your life, yeah. be it whatever, you'll take it on board. Yeah. Even if you, like deep down, you might not necessarily agree with it because your heart or your head's telling you to do something else. Yeah. But when they tell you, ultimately, they're right. Yeah, 100%. Like, exactly what you just said. The, the small child in me will be like livid that their opinion is different, yep. but then the adult in me kind of goes, they're probably right. Do they support Arsenal? Yeah, both of them do. Yeah. Yeah. A staunch Arsenal family? Staunch, yeah. Apart nice. from my dad, Newcastle. Yeah, favourite ever it. Arsenal player? Mine, <laughs> Ray Parler. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, seriously, Ray Parler. Like, uh, there, there are a million. Is that because you work from. with him? No, no, it wasn't actually. It was when I was little. He's just the one. I have like really odd taste in men. Like if you know my family, and they'll tell you, like I am. You like the ginger rugby type, didn't you? Or yeah, I do. Like that. And yeah. also like long hair, long hair, yeah. long, just basically just like you. Yeah. Just locks, yeah. <laughs> Lucky I long, shaved me hair today long last night. Bri <laughs> yeah, is that why you've cut your hair? Yeah. We, we need more than That's just. That's why like, the a cameraman's cut his hair and all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea. Yeah. But no, like, uh, like when I was younger, I was always obsessed. Like anyone, any man with like long hair. Like, do you remember Castro Giovanni played? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Obsessed with him. Really? Yeah. One of my first boyfriends basically was Castro Giovanni, but in English form. <laughs> and uh, I'm, like when I was younger. Mel uh, Gibson, like watching Lethal Weapon and all yeah, that. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah. I just loved it. And when I was younger, it was like David Seaman when he had his ponytail. Yeah. Ray Parler with his curly locks. Petit. Was, like, Emmanuel Petit was honestly Top dog, wasn't it? loved him. Like absolutely loved him. He used to have all of those like A4 posters that you pull out of the magazines yeah. like all around the top of the rooms. Yeah. And yeah, I was obsessed with him. And he was the last one I met out of that like out of all of those icons. Yeah. Ray Parler was the last one that I met and now I work with him regularly and I love him. Is it like um a little bit of a dream come true because obviously yeah. just staunch Arsenal and to work with people like this and hear the stories of yeah, how, yeah. how he would talk about Arsene Wenger or some of those. I mean, you probably be, probably been told stories that <laughs> they can't be told out live. Do you know what I mean? But it's so good. But is it like as an Arsenal fan, you're like, I can't believe I just fucking heard yeah, this. Yeah, but it doesn't get old. Yep. You know, you know how people say hello. You know how people say like, oh. Um, is that a fan? He's followed us all the way from fucking Waterloo, this geezer. It's the next boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ken. <laughs> it's really looking, isn't it? I'm embarrassed. Um, yeah, that, you know, people say, oh, you get used to it. You don't. You don't get used to it. No. Like, Ray Parler came in the other day and he brought in his medals, his Premier League medals. Wow. Um, and one of them, so it was 98. It, might, it was the 98, yeah, because they did the double. So yeah, I think it was the yeah, 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 yeah. So he brought his medals in, and on one of them, it doesn't have the year, weirdly. So, really? his, so his dad, yeah, so his dad had written on a little post-it note the year and it had stayed on there yeah. since he bought it. So he was like, don't lose a post-it note. We were all like taking them out and like handing them around the office. And he was like, don't lose a post-it note. And uh, those little things just don't, don't ever get old for me. No, 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 and, no. and Ray is one of the best because the amount of times I've worked with him, he's still got stories I've never heard. Yeah. And I've, and I've listened to a lot of his, like just radio shows over the year as well before I've been able to work with him myself. And he's still got stories. I'm like, where did that one come from? They're just so great. So your your background, you're talking about your old man from Newcastle. Yeah. yeah. Um, how come you didn't follow him with the black and white and all that? <laughs> so what is the background? Like mums, dads, brothers? Yeah. What so, do they do? So granddad, my granddad, Ernie, he was an Arsenal fan. Yep. And he used to live next door to Highbury. Yep. And he used to sneak into Highbury. And, uh, when you could. Yeah, exactly. Literally, when you could. Like back in those days, not that I would ever remember that. So that whole side of my family, my mum's side, are all Arsenal, yep. big Arsenal fans. And then my dad's Newcastle. But they split up when I was about three. Okay. So so like so we obviously grew up in the Arsenal side of the family. Yeah. And Newcastle never even got a look in. And now, now Newcastle are going to get good again. Yeah. It's the first time in my life where I'm like, ah oh, shit. Yeah, maybe I can be friends with my dad again. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. But it's great now. Like this is what's so wonderful about working in sport is. The other day, um, towards the end of the season, I got him a, a ticket in a box. You're name dropping now, aren't you? No, I'm not, I'm not going to name drop where I got it from, but I, but I got him a ticket in a box 
and he bought two of his friends. And honestly, I've never seen him, so, so oh, he was so happy. Do you know what's nice about that is that you can tell that you're that way inclined. Is in like when I was doing the knowledge. Yeah. I remember I remember parking outside um, a hotel in St James's, and this like my mum wasn't very well. And I said to my pal I was doing the knowledge with, I'm like, I can't wait to be a cab driver because I can't wait to do things for my mum yeah. like, and my dad. And yeah. like my mum, like she passed away a couple of months after after I passed the knowledge, yeah. unfortunately. So I never was unable to do that for her. So when I hear stories of people, and especially people like yourselves, that you still do things with your family, for your family, yeah. I think it's brilliant. And people get a little bit waylaid and a little bit carried away with their lives and they forget about family, do you know yeah. what I mean? So I think that's yeah. it's very good. Don't cry, by the way. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but it's true. It's like people, I suppose social media gives you a perception of things, don't they? And it looks like, oh, you get all these like, great trips and all these like free things and whatever. And um, you do, <laughs> you yeah, do, yeah. but it's only worth it if you can bring the people that you love. Yeah, like, your latest jaunt now, you've done it with your pals, when it, where did you go? I went to Monaco. Yeah, to Monaco. So I got this call right. My agent was like, listen, you've been invited to Monaco. I went, oh, fucking hell. I said, great, uh, can I bring a mate? Because I didn't want to go on my own. Yeah. And they were like, actually, you can't bring a mate. I went, ah, oh, OK. I don't really want to go if I can't bring a mate. And no. then they sent me the itinerary, and I was like, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'll be there. Yeah. And honestly, it was it was amazing. And I went on my own. Oh, you didn't take a power, no? I didn't take a power, oh, no. Okay. But I saw loads of people out there that I knew, so it was all right. Of course. But even like the people on the boat that I went with, they were so nice that you make friends immediately. That's like, nice. And if you're like, you're the same as me, you'll talk to anyone. Yeah, so yeah. I was never worried about making friends. And actually, sometimes it's quite nice to do something on your own. Because it's nice to be out of the comfort zone a little exactly, bit as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You're like forced to, to talk to new people. And, and I really like listening to sort of other people's stories. I think that's why I do what I do, because yeah. I like the interviewing side Different. of things. Is like, all you're doing is learning about somebody else and yeah. learning about their lives and unpicking and un understanding them. So I quite like that anyway. So I went on this boat and it was, it was insane. And like, the first night out we went, like, we ended up going to like the Red Bull um, Energy Station, I think it's called. Yep. Anyone who's everyone is in, is in there. Mm. Ended up getting in, I don't even know, 5 a.m., 6 a.m. We had to meet at 9 a.m. to go back onto the boat the next day for the actual GP on, on Sunday. I woke up at half 11. Are you a boozer when you're out? Yeah. Because I've seen on the socials you like a little bit of bagatelle, champagne popping, dancing on the fucking tables, giving it love. Yeah, but do you know what? That's not my normal hangout. No? No. What do you no. do to let your hair down, though? So what do oh, you get? That's... What do you like to do? I literally, like, my my best thing to do... I know is lay down with your Frenchie and just look at shit. It's literally lay down on my sofa with my phone in my hand and my Frenchie yeah. in the other. Yeah. <laughs> no. Like, best thing to do is just me and my friends, we'll get together, we'll go to a pub, like, yeah. the pub is this the best, yeah. and just drink cider all day and then Jaeger bombs. Jaeger bombs is the one thing that I always say to my friends, don't let me get around the Jaeger bombs, and then I'll disappear at some point in the night and I'll come back with 17 four. trays of, of Jaeger bombs. And I mean, then I go back. 17 trays because you're Keiko now, and you're like, normally it'd be just one or two, but now it's like 17 trays worth. <laughs> no, I'm like, just keep them coming, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just take my card beyond the, beyond the ramp, mate. <laughs> but no, it's my thing, Jaeger bombs, I just love them. Do you know what, as well, is, is actually. Like, I've still got all the same friends. Like, no, nothing, That's good. Yeah, nothing changes. I wouldn't even consider myself in the bracket of, of being, like, so um, well-known that my friendship groups change or anything like that. Do you get like, a bit of banter from your friends, though? That Because, listen, you've made it, right? Let's not fucking beat around the bushes. So you've <laughs> made it, but do your... I find that your real mates are the ones that can take the piss out of you. Yeah. But you know the ones that mean it in a sense of... They're not being nasty about it, yeah. And you, they can take banter, but then you've got. I mean, you might have had friends that doing what you do. There's envy. There's, there's envy there. So they're happy. For, they're happy for you, but they yeah. don't want you to do better. Yeah. Your. Do you know what I actually find is your your friendship group gets smaller. Yeah. Um. But my. Oh, he knows you. He knows, Look at yeah. that. <laughs> He's well out, but He's gonna fucking tug away later on and all. <laughs> Met a celebrity, didn't I? Yeah. Gave him a little hoot. <laughs> Um, yeah, your friendship group gets smaller because you, um, a few different reasons really, like... Sleeping with their boyfriends and things like that. <laughs> no! <laughs> no, sleeping with Not everyone anymore. else. <laughs> no, just that you, you just learn who you can trust and who you can't trust. Yeah. And um, I still have the very same group. But it's not to say I don't make new friends. Like, no. I do. I do make new friends. And, and actually, I think you might find this. As you get a bit more of an adult, 
you really know what you look for in friends. Like yeah. you really, you can't. And it can be quite minimal. Yeah. Like it's not hard, the basics. Just yeah. a bit of honesty and loyalty. That's all that's needed exactly. across the board. Loyalty, genuinely, like that is. As I get a bit older now, that that is the number one thing. Loyalty, and also, can you have a drink? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but around people that are not going to take pictures and plaster it on the Sun uh, newspaper or yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, like you've been, you've been sort of around the world. You've been to all sorts of different events, venues, mm. and whatever. Where has been the best atmosphere for you? What do you enjoy the most? Yeah. Do you know what I? Um... Like you've sat there and you've gone like it's put. I mean, yeah. I would say tingles in your prick. So I don't know. Yeah, basically, I know what you're saying. Um, I got the tingles when it was the most recent one actually that I went to, and um, I was in Madison Square Garden. I'd never been there in my life. Mm -hmm. I was working with Zone, but the Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano one. Really? And honestly, like Aaron, I've been to some amazing events. I've been to some like like World Cup finals, like Euros finals. I've been to some of these incredible places. Yeah. But that one. The arena wasn't even the biggest I've been in. No. I can't remember. It wasn't that. It wasn't even like twenty thousand or something. I like think that. it only holds about fifteen, sixteen thousand. That's doesn't it, right? Yeah. Huge, yeah. So it was a sellout. And but but the thing is, it was like Puerto Rican um, fans and Irish the fans, Irish, yeah. and then like some of the travelling Brits as well. But the Irish were amazing. And uh, Katie Taylor, we were stand we were standing in our little studio cubicle thing right at the top, Madison Square Garden. And me and Belly were looking out at it. And um, her walk on, I can't remember what the music was. It was like, it wasn't a banger at all. It was quite slow. It was just this woman singing. Yep. Katie Taylor must have taken like baby steps the whole way. Really? Her, her walk on lasted for minutes and minutes. But honestly, her, like seeing her face and in the arena that she was in and the noise they were making, I've never heard anything louder. I couldn't hear a fucking thing. You put your hands on your head. arms up. It's done mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah just thinking about couldn't it. Couldn't hear a thing. It was like, Eddie described it as spiritual. Yep. And I was like, that is exactly what it was. It was spiritual. And I looked at Tony and I was then I was like, I've literally never experienced anything like this. And he went, I think she thinks it could be the last time she walks. Because obviously if she'd have lost that fight. She's in, she's trying to just take it in and enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, taking it all in. So then when I had that in my head, then it made me quite emotional as well, because I was like, wow, like, because I know all about Katie. I met Katie just after the Olympics, um, 20. 12 Olympics yep. when she was just coming up and coming through and going professional and like all that sort of stuff and I know a lot about what she went through to get to that point as well yep. Eddie talks about her obviously Eddie, Eddie will talk about her for like days and days about how amazing she is and I listen to all that and I know all about it yep. so I think just that moment being especially in that when you're place, involved in it as well then you know the yeah you know the backstories yep. and I, it was honestly the best thing I've ever experienced. Like the colours as well, all the flags, like the, the way that she was looking into the camera and looking around, and the crowd were on top of her. Like mm. it's it's such a small venue in that sense that the crowd literally feel like they're on top of you. It was just yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, nice. And the what's fight, it, of course, was incredible too. What's it like working for with Edward? <laughs> I love him. Is he alright? Yeah. Essex boy, isn't he? Proper Essex boy through and through. Not many people know this, but I've worked with the Hearns since I was 21 yeah. and uh so you know my cousin for quite a long time and you're Frank Smith yeah, I can't Frank. believe that's your cousin yeah, it's mad. so him he's his mum and my mum's sisters that's mad do you know what Frank and me when we were in New York together we sat at a restaurant yeah it was a posh one we sat next to each other right in our posh little clothes with our posh little champagne all paid for all paid for by Eddie yeah <laughs> and we said to each other when I first started working for Sky and he started working for Matchroom, yeah. he was even younger than I was. He mm -hmm. was like 18 or something. Yeah. And we were both bottom, bottom, bottom. I was a runner, he was a runner pretty much. Tea we were, we were, yeah, he was making teas, I was making shit coffees. And um, we used to, we were always friends when we worked together. We worked like in York Hall, Bethnal Green yeah, on the yeah, pool. Yeah. We worked on the darts, we were, we'd go to like um, Blackpool together for like 10 days. All the shows that I worked on were mm -hmm. matchroom events yeah. for Barry. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I knew all of them so well. And then we got to the stage where we were sat there in New York and we were like, wow, we've done all right, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> we've actually done all right. Combine those fucking wages, you'd be all right, wouldn't you? <laughs> fucking hell, you'd be living next door to Ricky Gervais soon. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I did Christ. look into that, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he's, he might even be doing a bit better than me, actually, Frankie. Oh, Frank? Yeah, I, I keep saying to him, like, you need to start sort of providing for the family as a whole, not just yourself. <laughs> exactly. You've got to start taking you us to places. paying Aaron's phone bill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. You're fucking trying to beg all you fuckers to try and get on the podcast. Oh. But no, the answer is Eddie's wicked to work for. He's great. He's the one that called me up 
for the design gig. Called mm -hmm. me up and said, look, we want you on board. These are our plans. You are the obvious choice, though. Yeah. And that's not blowing smoke up your ass, yeah, because they want to, they want to, they obviously they want to take over like, boxing as a whole, and they, they probably have, like, nailed it. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the um, Dillian White Fury. Yeah. BT. Yeah, I just... You didn't it, like it? Like, I went, so I didn't, I didn't see no, the No, I went there, so I, went, I obviously went to the, went to the fight, yeah. but I just... Putting on the shows, you can't compete with Matchroom. Do you know, I, I don't personally think. And they I think the right, zone is obviously they've they've come away from Sky and are doing their own thing, um, and they've cherry picked who they want. And I think moving forward, like you are, you're, you're at the minute you're the cream of the crop. Do you know what I mean? You're you're still up and rising as well, mm -hmm. but you've you've established yourself with Talksport, taking over from Big Al. And, like he's probably going to kill over soon at some point. Oh, don't, don't poor, say that. Poor man. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you know? You know when like you talk about getting shit and people taking the piss, like for me I automatically go back into cabby mode. Yeah. So when people give me shit, I'm like, yeah, I'll have it with you. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll verbally have it with you. If you yeah. want to go there, I'll have it. But people say to me now, like even him in the back will say that nah no, like there maybe you gotta sort of rein it in a little mm. bit and but do you find I mean you posted up something the other day about when someone said about Akin Fenra <laughs> and you made, and you replied back with something. Yeah. Like do you have to clear things with no. management or, or no. you're all right with it? This is this is something that ever since I started doing anything on telly, yeah. social media was always there. I never had the um, I never had the grace period of, of just learning the trade without yeah. being immediately judged by someone. Yeah. Um, and it can it can be a hindrance, but it can help you a little bit as well. Because sometimes you might make a mistake that you haven't even noticed, mm. and then someone on social media goes, "Why did you say that?" Oh, and you're it's like, nuts, "Shit, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't even know I said that." Like, it just happens. Like, you get nervous. TV's different, you know. You just say things you don't even mean. Um, and but one way I've always dealt with it is by that's that's me in general. Like, I do have a bit of a smart tongue, and like I'll do I do bite back. Is that and, your upbringing? Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. You, you can't, you've got two big brothers. Yeah. Like, you can't do anything apart from fight for your life in certain situations. So that's that's what I did, and that's what I do. And um, I do notice a lot, like, we'll get emails from our company leaders that say, like, don't engage in things on social media. But if you are if you would like me to not do that, then give me the support of how to deal with all of the yeah. shit that you do get on social media. And to be honest, I get less, I don't get a lot. Yeah. Like when I started doing breakfast, I got a lot, but it's, it's changed. But it's because it? like of what people are used to with exactly. Alan Brazil. It's like, I, as you said, people yeah. are scared of change. But do you, I mean, I've said this before, um, and there, obviously there's extremities to it. So I think, me personally, you know, I speak my mind, I think a lot of you blue tick brigade buggers, right, should be able to go back at these trolls and say, who the fuck are you talking to? Yeah. Don't talk to me like I'm a cunt. Do you know what, excuse the language, right? But when you've got management around you or an agent and whatever, they're telling you, oh no, don't engage with this and yeah. don't do that. But this is where people get away with it. So then what you've got, if you've got someone that's mentally struggling, yeah. can take it really personally, yeah. then all of a sudden they've killed themselves because yeah. of certain remarks. Whereas you want them to sort of stand up for themselves. Yeah. You're not doing it. Like, like management and agent, they're just advising, oh no, don't do that because we can't be bothered to deal with the fucking backlash. Mm -hmm. Fuck the backlash. Like people, and I think this is why people don't mind what I do, is that I am, I try to speak up for people that can't necessarily speak up and I will, I will, I will put my point across. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But, or do you think that maybe I'm going a bit too much there no. and we should just keep my mouth shut? No, no, because that's when I started following you. I can't remember which one I saw. It was, it was you were tearing in someone from Essex. Naturally. I can't, of course it was. I can't remember which one it was, but it was refreshing. It was funny, and you and I don't think you go too far actually, to be honest. And but I watched Ricky Gervais's new stand-up the other night, and um, brilliant, eh? It's so good, isn't it? It's but he's so he's getting good. shit. I know. He's getting shit, and you think, but how? He's just yeah. All he's doing, is just stating the fucking obvious. Yeah. Like, but yet again, I find that doing what I do, they want to they want to tone it down, and that people want to be sort of. Um, taken out the firing line for when, when it's people are taking the piss out of someone. Yeah. Oh, so it's alright to take the piss out of them, but you can't take the piss out of them because they're in a wheelchair. Yeah, there's 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 levels. I mean, if you watch the whole thing from start to finish, with what he's saying, I don't think you can disagree with. No. Um, but when you take it out of context... When you take which, snippets... <laughs> which is the problem with, with social media these days, is yeah. everything is taken out of context and then, you're, and then you're in trouble. But that's why... 
That's why I think sometimes, like, when I if I tweet something back, and I do it not very often, but I do it fairly often enough, sometimes it'll go viral, and then I think, oh, shit, like, what have I done? But, again, like, that's the way of de- that's my way of dealing with it. Mm-hmm. And if it puts off a few people from doing it, brilliant. People yeah. are weird, aren't they? They're, they're, yeah. But what gets me is that people that comment on your stuff that don't even follow you, <laughs> but then they'll they'll comment months yeah. down the line as well. When you're like, bro, you're still here, so yeah. I'm still I'm still in your head, like I'm paying rent. Literally. But you don't even follow me, so what I'll, I'll 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 write comments now, is that I'll just reply, yeah, no, thanks very much for the follow as well. And every comment you make, I earn a pound, so thank you very much. <laughs> and then people, they think they're funny by saying, here, yeah, have another pound, and by the way, I don't follow you. Well, now it looks like, who looks like a fucking awkward cunt, do you know what I mean? So you don't follow me, but you're commenting on me yeah. stuff. and it's all engagement, isn't it? This is what people don't understand about the way social media works, is any engagement is actually good engagement, so, unfortunately. So, talking about good engagement and people that you've worked with and, and who, who you possibly you haven't met, if there was five people in the world you'd like to have a dinner date with, I don't know why, but David Ginola just came straight to my mind. Hey? David Ginola just came straight Ginola, to my yeah? mind. But it's I've that long hair though, and yeah, probably seen it, someone walking down the street. I've worked with him before, so I don't know why, but you know what, he's there, so he's, yeah, let's pop him in. Yeah. Um, Roy Keane I've worked with a couple of times and I just love him. Yeah. I just think he's he's charming, like, and that doesn't come across on air sometimes, no. but my God, he's charming. So Cheeky Roy Irish Keane, in him. Yeah, he's definitely going to be in there. Um, in terms of sports people like around the world hmm. I would actually I'd stick Messi in there just because I've met Ronaldo before I've never met Messi yeah and I just... Messi or Ronaldo Messi sorry is it Ronaldo for you no it's Messi good okay there we go um cool. that's gonna stop <laughs> that's gonna give me problems isn't it um how many want to two more so you got um... two more so you got Messi Ginola Roy King hmm let me have a little thing. I need some ladies in there, don't I? Was just I was going to say, are you going to get your fucking teeth who, pulled down soon if you don't pick gonna, a woman? Do you know what? This is this might surprise you, but um, Claire Balding. Yeah. Yeah. Reason being is she honestly, I think, is the best broadcaster, like one of the best in her generation. She looks like Frank when Frank grows his hair. <laughs> Frank looks like her because she's older. <laughs> I would. I mean, I would definitely stick her in there just because I just think she's like. From a journalist's point of view, from a presenter's point of view, yeah. if you want to learn something, you watch Claire. Like, the way she delivers is, is incredible. Yeah, yeah. And she fills time. She filled this time once at 2012. I watched, her, I watched her do a piece about a flower. It was just about a flower for about seven minutes. It was outside the copper box or something. Yeah. And I was like, fuck me, this flower's interesting, isn't it? Anyway, she came on my show once, like years and years later, last year it was. And I went, do you remember that thing you did about the flower? I said, was that Phil? And she went, she went, yeah, she said the guest had pulled out a couple of minutes before and they had to fill something like seven minutes of airtime. Wow. Which if you tell a presenter to do on their own, that's terrifying Seven stuff. minutes, that feels like an hour, doesn't that's it? That's going to kill your career if you get that wrong. <laughs> anyway, she just did it about this flower and I was like, fuck me, that is an operator. So yeah, she's coming because I reckon she'd be like a great chatter as well. Yeah. She'd just be really good. Do you reckon her and Roy Keane would get on? Um, you know what? Yeah, I think they would. I think I think that I think that would really surprise you. I think they would really get on. Come, you've got um, one more creme de la creme. One more. Oh, there's a lot of pressure on this, isn't there? Let me just Any, have a, a comedian or an actor. Do you know what? I'd stick Ricky Gervais in there. Yeah. Yeah, I've gone very sport heavy, haven't I? Don't know why I did that. Well, probably because it's your job. Yeah, I'd stick Ricky Gervais in there because I just think it would be. It'd be fascinating. It'd throw something in there that would fucking piss someone off, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be brilliant, actually. Sit back and sip in the cognac. What a strange little... I mean, that's a line-up for, like, I'm a celebrity or something, isn't it? Definitely. Strange little line-up. Put him in the jungle, yeah. I almost want to take Messi out now, because I don't think he's, like, bringing enough conversation. Do you yeah, know what I mean? I don't think he speaks English, <laughs> That's a really good point. No. <laughs> I, love, I love how I'm berating him for not speaking English. It's I mean, so I don't He's got everything he eats, but he don't speak English. Probably That's why people he's, pick he's fucking Ronaldo. Not much of a chatterbox, is he? So he's probably not going to be in there. How's Lulu getting on? She's great. She all right? Yeah. Do you want to do fine. a pit stop for her to have a little wee or what? She might need one, yeah. Okay. Can you see a little bit of grass? <laughs> <laughs> and let us out. It's she'll grass. have a little wee. But I, you know what? She's literally just, yeah, she's doing what she does and standing all over me. Does she not do it on a bit of concrete? Or does she like a little she, bit of comfort grass? She across? might. It's probably more me, isn't it? That, like, just in case yeah. she, yeah. Uh... As a poo. Yeah, exactly. Are you yeah, uh, yeah, looking forward to, like, the Jubilee? Do you do anything? You're patriotic? You got any bunting going up on the flat? Or... No. Flat or a house, sorry. It's, 
It's a flat house. It's like a masonette. Two yeah, up, that's two fun. down. <laughs> yeah, Old Victorian. Much. It's like a flat on top of another flat. Yeah. With a terrace at the back. Okay. That I'm Is doing. It like up. an Edwardian house. Um. Old school house or not? It might be Edwardian. It might be Victorian. Okay. Can't remember. So it's not like a new build. No, it's not a new build. No, no, it's quite old school actually. It's cool. So why do you um? Obviously, I'm not going to tell the viewers where you live because they'll start yeah. fucking. Not, mingling yeah. around in the bushes close by it, but why do you live where you live? Why not closer to where Essex um, is? Well, I actually didn't even grow up in Essex. I was born in Essex and we lived there for probably about two years. And then we moved to central London. Cool. Moved to Liverpool Street. And then we moved out to Surrey. Mm -hmm. And when I say Surrey, oh, everyone, sorry, okay, yeah. Yeah, everyone thinks, oh, sorry. Cobham. Um, no, no, Catrum, near Croydon. You can afford to live in Cobham now though, can't you? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. <laughs> One more contract with the zone, we're all right. <laughs> Um, but the reason the reason I live where I do now, South West London, is just because it's close to Sky. Yep. So. Oh, Brentford. Yeah, yeah. When I was looking around, I was thinking oh, I'll live there, and then I just made like we were talking about friends earlier on. I made I made my London friends, mm -hmm. and then we all stayed in the same place, and yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I, so I quite and it's kind of close to everything. It's not. I mean, we go up and down the country all the time, so now I could probably live anywhere to be honest. Mm -hmm. I will. My next move might not be another London move. It might be a. It might be an out of town move. Gotcha. Yeah. When or I'm ready greenery. to do, yeah. When I'm ready to do like the family thing and all that. Yeah. It'll be. It might be an out of town. Job. So, which leads us on to the next question. <laughs> um, do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> I can't believe you're asking me this. Yeah, okay. Do I have a boyfriend? No, not at the moment. Are you dating someone? Are you courting? Yes. Okay. Like my longest relationship was eight years. Okay. Um, and I just wasn't. Oh. <laughs> I just wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to settle down. For sure, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, so you've, you've, but look what you've done with like your career path. And, yeah. You know, you've nailed that. But honestly, like the weirdest thing about it is that that career path. When I broke up with my long-term boyfriend, who I adored, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. I, I adored him, but it wasn't right anymore. Yep. When we broke up, um, my career just like went just skyrocketed. Yeah, it really did because I threw everything at it. I just was like. I didn't have any distractions. I didn't have anyone to look after. I literally just was like, I took like every job. Like checking in with people and all that. Yeah, yeah. I took every job. I, I did, I spent all my time researching. I didn't have any other like, honestly, if you ask my friends, like I was never around because I just worked all the time. But you have to do that. I was going to say, do, do you find that the amount that I that I see that people can see on your social media, the amount that you travel for work and where yeah. you go and what you do, do you yeah. think it is very hard for you to be able to sort of have that boyfriend, but then there is probably someone out there that understands what you do. Yeah, I think I think I've I've kind of always thought about this, and I've considered it a lot lately as well. The person that I think I will settle down with will have to have like a really good understanding of what I do, mm -hmm. and I don't. I almost don't. Just got their own thing going on yeah, as well. I yeah, I don't yeah. want them in. The, I'm not gonna say I'd, like I'd like them to have something different going on. Like I wouldn't want them to be so invested in my industry or anything like that. Like yeah. have something different, but they have to be really. Um, I have to be really uh, self-assured and not insecure. Yeah, because, because listen, when I saw you at the um, Ali Pali fight with Johnny Fisher. The boxing, yeah, yeah. I saw the amount of cock that was trying to get in and around you was frightening. Even more so than Connor Ben. <laughs> like, they was, and like, you've got geese, Laura, 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 gurning off their chops. Wanted to give you a nice big fucking fancy cuddle. Like, <laughs> some of the dick pics you must get sent on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. I mean, you probably saved a few and just gone, that's quite impressive. I mean, I you're a cunt, but girls. it's quite impressive. Yeah, I send them to girls all the time. Brilliant. In my group. Even the maggots in a roll nick, you probably send them as well. <laughs> I do. But it's <laughs> like, how many showers do you have to have on a, after a night out? It's like, because the, yeah. the cuddles, you, but you, because you're a people's person as well, yeah. you don't want to be seen as, no, no, no. So it's no. like you'll give a hug, do you know what I mean? Or a handshake. Oh, I love them though, I love them. Mm. That's why I love the darts so much, because like, it's, they're, they're seen, my, they're you my kind of people. You posted that thing up, didn't you? Laura was just have a scran of your arsehole <laughs> or whatever it was. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. Oh, I know, I did think, I was like, am I going to get a message from one of my bosses to say don't do that? Yeah. But again, like, I think the, I think the whole point, if you're a presenter, your biggest, in my opinion, if you're a presenter, your biggest strength is authenticity. Yep. No one wants to hear someone who's not being their true self, right? No, no, no. And, and my entire upbringing are those kind of people. 
Like, I'm, I'm no different to those kind of people, and I'd like to go to the pub and drink with those kind of people yeah, after the game. They're your people, yeah. Yeah, they're my people. So, so like, I know what you're saying, like, <laughs> you can describe it as a lot of cock. <laughs> and that's cool, like, that's fine. But I enjoy it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not saying I enjoy, oh my God. You no, know what I'm no, saying? Yeah, no, no, I, I enjoy socialising. Yeah. yeah, I enjoy socialising with them. I love having photos with them because every time someone asks for a photo, I can't believe my luck. I'm like, really? People want a picture with yeah. you. Do you know what? People ask me, listen, I'm not on your level, but when people ask no, but you me. You are, though. Can, like, no, it's no, no, the no, same no. thing. When I, get a, when I get asked for a picture and people say to me, does it not like get on your nerves? I'm like, no. They're asking for a picture. Yeah. It's amazing. Do you know what I mean? I think it's, I think it's great. And yeah. then you get people that come up to you and they, they'll give you a little quick, like, you've helped me with my mental, yeah. men, mental health. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, your videos have cheered me up. And I, I, yeah. I take that and I'm like, that's fucking, that's brilliant. Isn't so that amazing. You've got to be with someone. I like what you're saying, that the fella that you end up with has to understand that you're, you're a beautiful woman and you're going to get that attention all the time. But mm. So you can't then be with an insecure twat that is like continuously, like he might message you, he knows that you're on a break on DAZN or on Sky yeah. Sports, right? And then he messages you. Just because you haven't messaged him back, don't get the hump about it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, I'm working. Yeah. I'll fucking, I live with you, you prick. I'm going to be home yeah. soon. And that's the thing, Aaron, like, oh, like, I don't know what like, everybody else is like, but for me, like, when I am in love with someone, I'm like properly in love with them. Yeah. And I'm not that kind of person. Yeah. So, so yeah, all I can do is like, I can't keep reassuring someone. No. You know, I can't keep saying like, everything's fine, like nothing's happening, da da da. Like, it is my job. And also I can't, I can't compromise my job for that reason for sure. either. But what it does do is when I am in a relationship, I take a step away from my job anyway. And I want that, I don't, I want the balance. I don't want to work all the time. That's why I got the dog, because yeah. I was like, genuinely, I just, she actually makes me not want to work so much. Really? Yeah, she does. It is a breed that you can't leave alo alone for Fuck a long time, me. isn't it? They but that's because, like, when you said about bringing her. Yeah. So, silly nuts in the back here. Never really been brought up around dogs. Quite oh, nervous no, about dogs. are you serious? Right? Oh, no. So, I messaged him yesterday. I said, look, Woody wants oh, to bring baby. the Frenchie. Oh. I'm asking you first, is it all right? But I said to him, I said, I wouldn't ask if I knew how like, chilled yeah. out and relaxed they were as a breed. And he was like, <sighs> like because right? he's, he's preaching to his yeah. boy about yeah. like not being scared of dogs when you see him in the park or oh. whatever. So, um, so yeah, look, I, he said, I've got to practice what I preach here. Oh. How are you getting on, Russ? I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. No, honestly, like they, they are lovely. But she has a better life than I do. Honestly, I, I fix it up so she's never on her own. Yeah. So she goes to daycare. Like she's, I've got two different ones a daycare, and ones like if I need her looked after at the weekend. Mm -hmm. But, but the thing is, like, I want to spend all my time with her, and mm. I want to take her to the pub with me, and I want to take her out to girls, and like, I want to take her anywhere. Like I want her with me all the time. So, yeah, she's, she's like, she basically she got kicked out of one daycare. She got expelled um, for fighting. Doing what? Fighting. Oh, biting. What, another dog or a... Fighting. Yeah. Oh, fighting, okay. You know what French is like? Because they've got little stubby yeah. faces. They can't actually bite properly. So, yeah, she got kicked out for fighting. And I um, I had to, like, have a dog kind of... Walker, carer. ...therapist, trainer oh. come over. Caesar Milan. Yeah, and she was like, look, this dog thinks she owns the place. But you need to exert some more authority. Yeah. Where does she sleep? And I was like, not in my bed. Like, what? Well, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, she, she does. She was like, does she sleep in your bed? And I was like, yeah. But she doesn't just sleep in my bed. She sleeps on my arm. On your pillow, yeah. Like, yeah. literally, she's like, she's here. But that's what they're like. They love a snuggle. Yeah, they do. And, like, she's, that's, 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 like, a lot of the time, like, I try to put her outside, and I realise, like, I don't want her outside. No. You know, I, and they're I know... They're not that type of dog, not that type of dog. They're not, they're not a, they're not a um, like, a German shepherd or anything like yeah. that. They're not that type of dog. Yeah, that's, that's really true. So, anyway, like, I love her, but... Um, Have yeah. you had her neutered? Yeah, she's done. Yeah, 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 She's done. I had everything. Like, you know what they're like. Frenchie's got all sorts of problems. Yeah. Um, but I've got her on a good diet. I do everything I can just to make sure that she's, like, a happy little dog, basically. I don't like these ones that want a fucking grey and a blue one and fucking cat's eyes. Do you know what I mean? That was when we started talking, wasn't it? Yeah. We started talking about Frenchie. Yeah. Yeah, because I got her. And I remember looking around and my dad was like, look, don't go for a blue. And I was yeah. like, why? And, and he said they've just got so many problems with their skin and their eyes and their ears. That's it, yeah. If you get a recognised colour, which is one of these ones or... Yeah, fawn, brindle. Well, exactly. Yeah. 
then they're the ones that they're going to have a lot better or a lot less health and issues. You, and your insurance won't be through the roof. But yeah. the insurance for these dogs are quite expensive anyway, but they yeah. won't, like, for those ones, it's through the roof. Yeah, exactly. Not going to break the bank massively. Um, Do you know oh, where we are? Yeah, look at this. Wow, because it's a jubilee. Yeah. I wonder why it's so bloody busy. Ah, oh, look, you've taken me on a really nice... Oi, is Big Ben... Don't oi me. Is Big, <laughs> Fucking is Big oi. Ben open again? Yeah, look behind you to your right. She's claiming that she's not patriotic. Of course she is. I am a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I do love a big cock. Oh my god. Hey, that I waited for ages. So, That's taken me ages to. You've been, you've been lining that up for months, though. <laughs> I've been lining up. I hope he takes me past fucking Big Ben, so I've got it in my ammo. <laughs> It does look beautiful though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Do, it but that was under fucking wraps for like four years. Yeah. And yeah. do you know when they were taking the scaffold down, a crane hit the building? Are you joking? Yeah. Did they have to so do that, it again then? Is that why? So they had to delay it. Idiot. And then redo it. Idiot. Oh. Don't pull me, out, knobhead. She's giving me that look. Like, I'm desperate. Fucking hell, mate. You must get fed up with drivers. Oh, it gets on me nerves. When I see you in the back of an Uber, it gets some fucking tits. I don't really get Ubers. Yeah, don't give me that shit. I don't, they just, they put on like an Addison Lee for me. A few moments later. You know, Big Ben's taking the piss there, right? He is, isn't he? <laughs> what is it, midday? Must be. No, well, it's quarter past 12, unless someone's getting married. Isn't that, that, oh. that might be Westminster Abbey, even. Oh, fair enough. It was the last royals to get married at Westminster Abbey. The last royals to get married at yeah. Westminster Abbey? Was it one of the cousins? Was it like Beatrice or something? Beatrice. No, I thought, I've always thought, so I'll need to check up on my knowledge here. Yeah. I thought it was um, Kate and Will. Oh, really? Yeah. You're probably right, to be fair. Where did Harry and Meg Nuts get married? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. A church. Windsor. They got, they got married at Windsor, didn't yeah. they? I wasn't invited to that one. Not made it that big. You'll, be, yet. you'll, you'll get invited to his next one. <laughs> Let's hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be your plus one. <laughs> Team Gingers, me can and you. Mate. Can you get us there as well? Yeah, that'd be fine, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, look, I've got a white cap. Have you really? Have well, you ever done one? Wait, have you really? You've just fired. Look at the size wait, of it's is three this, tons. Is this white? Yeah. Oh, wow. My God. <laughs> she gets in and closes her eyes. I said I, do, I mean, I do a job of obs observation, but I'm obviously not observing very Have well. you ever stayed here? What is this? Conrad? Yeah, never no, stayed here. No, 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 meant to be a nice hotel. Is it? Yeah. See, I told you I'm normal. <laughs> Premier Inn. Is it? <laughs> I've stayed in some nice hotels in my time, but not that one. What's your best one? The Landmark. The oh, really, yeah? The Landmark's beautiful, yeah. The Germans, you know, Bayern Munich, when they come over and bash yeah. Arsenal every fucking season, yeah. they used to stay there. That's the last, that was one of the, yeah, the last Champions League game I went to, 5-1. Yeah, my, my Bayern Munich, Arsenal. Yeah. That was when Ozil Europe. missed a penalty, didn't he? Yeah, do you remember that was the second leg and the first leg was 5-1? Mm. And we played quite well to begin with and I was like, maybe, yeah. I had a little bit of belief. and then First you know, 10 minutes, we missed a penalty yeah. and then we went fucking 2-0 down. Did you go to that game? Yeah. We were both at that game. Yeah, I mean, it's written in the stars. It is, isn't it? it that energy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these builders. This is what I love about London. It's great, isn't it? What, the builders doing fuck all, yeah? Why nothing gets done? Well, the road, well, the road works are waiting to be done. Fucking joke. <laughs> is that your pet hate when you drive around London? Um, there's plenty. What's number one? I'd have to say cyclists. Really? Yeah, cyclists, because I just... Like, we, we've changed so much of the road infrastructure in London yeah, for, for them. them. Yeah. For them. I don't think long term it's for them necessarily. I think it's for like autonomous cars and all that stuff. Oh. Uh, but that's me going down the rabbit hole. Let's go down that rabbit hole. Autonomous cars scare the shit out of me, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, What's number two? Number two, probably Uber drivers. <laughs> I promise you I don't get them as much as you think. Okay. I don't Just like them. They're never available anymore either. That's because you don't get them, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's the reason why you don't get them. You're nervous. Let's get off the Uber, Uber driver's case. What's no, what would number three be? Number three, my main gripe, really, things that really cheese me off is when you allow people to cross the road and they don't say thank you. I agree. I hate that. Like, there's no need for it. Or when, you know when people cross the road and you know they've skipped into the road pretty quick, they see you coming and then they slow down? Yeah. And they look at you as if to say, yeah, I'm here, I'm what? <laughs> yes. 
You know when you let them cross yeah. and they don't say thank you? Do yeah. you open your window and go, thank you? Can't confirm or deny. I do that. What I say. I do that. I do. I've, I've, said, I've said a few things, of course. <laughs> but I can't get into it. <laughs> what, um, what bridge are we going over now? To our left. This one is... I know what this bridge is. This isn't... Uh, it's not the Waterloo one, is stop, it? Stop waiting for the fucking signs. No, I'm being serious, because that one down there is the Millennium, isn't it? This one... No, I can't remember. No. What is it? It's not Waterloo, is it? La... La... Lambeth. Oh, this is Lambeth? Yeah. Do you know what? I come over here, I cycle this way in the yeah. mornings, yeah. So there you go. When it's sunny and I'm on breakfast, I'll cycle up that side. I'll either cross this bridge or the next or the one. The next one, one is Westminster. Yeah, that's yeah. the one, Westminster. Mm. Right. I'm not very good on my knowledge, am I? Mm. I'd be a crap a bit taxi shit. driver. What's that big wheel thing? I've got no idea. Get <laughs> I'm joking, I'm Get joking. Fucked. It's obviously the London Eye, isn't it? What's its original name? Uh, the Millennium Wheel. There you go. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Do you remember when the Millennium Dome was just a dome with those weird bodies in yeah. it? And we all went to see it and we were like, is that it? Yeah. They were like, shit, we've There's got to change this up a bit. <laughs> There's loads to do there now, though. I know, it's wicked now. Have you ever walked on the roof of it? Yeah, I did. Do you know what? We did an opening link yeah. for one of the boxing fights, Dillian White's fight, can't remember who it was against, and he pulled out. Do you remember when it was just before he was going to fight Tyson? Yeah. And he pulled out, who was it against? Pulled out of that fight basically, he had an injury. Yeah. We'd filmed the top link on top of the Millennium Dome. Oh, really? We'd climbed up it, we'd used all these drones to film like this wicked top link yeah, yeah, yeah. about Dillian White, and then he didn't fight. So we Did never you have to get it. clearance as well for the drones? Yeah, we had to get clearance for everything. It was a, it was a ball ache for the production staff, and then we never used it. <laughs> but I had a lovely time. It's great, like, it's genuinely really fun. It's all beautiful, this, isn't it? It's lovely, it's lush. This isn't such a nice place. I mean, all right, I know you like your general knowledge is pretty shit, but like, do you like the historical parts of London? I do. do you like the architecture? I love, I love it. Because I used to live there when I was really little, yep. Liverpool Street, I've got a real nostalgia for London. Yeah. And like a, a nostalgia for the city of London in particular. To be fair, where you, I mean, where you live is just out far enough away from the hustle and bustle yeah. of it all, but it's literally a 20 minute commute in on the, yeah. on the Rattler, isn't it? It's not far at all, honestly, it's like, it's so quick, sorry. You are, yeah? It's just Monaco catching up with me, isn't it? Jesus. Um, yeah, there's something about London, like, people always ask me, like, would I ever move to, like, a different place? Like, would I ever move abroad or anything like that? Mm -hmm. At the moment, I really don't think I would, because I'm too much of a homely person. Yeah. Like, I love my family, I love all, like, my nieces and nephews. But I love London. Yeah. It's just something about London that I... You can't beat it. You can't, can you? No. It's so unique. Even I... even during the summer and like London oh. of a night time, it's beautiful. It's incredible. You know, I say like when I cycle in, I literally take a Boris bike because they're heavier. I was going to say, how heavy are those they're fucking... so things? heavy, but they make you work But harder. you box now though, didn't you? So you wow, can hold it out. super fit, aren't I? So like, I get on a Boris bike, cycle in at like four in the morning and the sun just comes up. And as the sun comes up, when you're going over Westminster Bridge and you see the London Eye and the clouds are like purple, mm. honestly, it's like one of my most favorite things. It's amazing. How many times have you stopped and taken a picture? So many times, I got pulled over by the police for doing it. Do you know some, because I've seen old Bill stop people on bridges and that because they've been trying to set up tripods and things like that. Yeah, yeah, no, I got, they can't do it. I basically got pulled over. I was, <laughs> I had my phone in my hand. I was filming the sunrise yeah. and all like the clouds and it was amazing, it was beautiful. And they literally pulled me over and they were like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm literally capturing the sun. No, 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 you they... gave it, I'm Laura Woods. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't. I was like, what's wrong with this? And they were like, you're all in the middle of the road. And I was like, it's 4 a.m. in the morning. You're the only car around. And it bollocks. I didn't give it that much chat, to be fair. I apologised You, you apologised, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Yeah. I'll pull over on the side of the street. Literally, yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> right, I did. I'm going to pull over in a sec. I'm yeah. going to have a little bit of a quick fire round. Okay. Don't overthink it, it's not hard. Okay. Right. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm fucking positive. Right, Laura, quick fire round of questions. Is that alright? Yeah. Sweet, right, get straight into it. What's your worst habit? Yawning. <laughs> Clearly. Your favourite swear word? Cunt. Say that again? Cunt. There you go. It does Love. feel great to say it though, doesn't Brilliant. it? 
Yeah, you can only say it in here, though. <laughs> What's your favourite meal? Pizza. Okay. Any particular topping? Margarita with ham. Okay. Um, what would you say is the, the most overrated meal, in your opinion, or piece of food? Fish. Fish, yeah? Anything fish. Ooh, overrated. Okay. So you don't like to go to Smith's or anything like that, do you? No. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, have you ever dated a pro sportsman? Yes. Okay, so I'm not going to ask who, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, who's the biggest wanker in the celebrity world? Oh, biggest wanker in the celebrity world. Oh, that's really hard, that one. Do you, uh, do you want to come back to it? No. She knows. Bob Arum. Who? Bob Arum, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, boxing. Any other particular reason why? Yeah, because he was he just slagged off Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. He was pretty nasty to Kate Abdo as well, so yeah, not... Okay. A bit, bit of a bit Uncle of a dinosaur, Bob. should Uncle we say? Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. If you was running Talksport and you was in charge, who would you sack? <laughs> Woo! Who would I sack? I would sack. Uh, I would sack the top dog because then his pay packet would get shared up among all the people below him. Right, I'm not having that as a fucking answer. I thought that was pretty good. No, I thought that was quite a political far answer. Far too intricate, that. Who? If you had to get rid of one presenter, who yeah. would you get rid of? I would get rid of Jamie O'Hara. Because he spurs. Because he spurs. There you go, we'll leave it at that. And because they just finished top four and the next season's going to be... I tried oh. not talking about that. It's so fucking annoying and they've got money to spend. I mean, this is a quick fire round, so... Try we'll being get... in on Monday morning after that happened. No, not at all. Horrendous. Not at all. Um, are the rumours true of you and Akin Fenway? <laughs> no. <laughs> I love him, though. He's like my work. He's like my brother. What was he like to work with? So good. You've done quite a bit with him during yeah. lockdown, didn't you? One of my favourite people on this planet. Yeah. Love him to death. He, yeah. look, he, he does look rather bubbly. and He's, like, just, he's like. brilliant, but no. <laughs> um, would you rather be on the top table with Uncle Wayno in Ocean Beach or let Kurt Zuma look after your dog? <laughs> Top table with Wayno. Yeah. I'm going to Ibiza. I'll be really? there anyway, yeah. Fuck, top table. Uncle, we've well, got to have a picture with Wayno. <laughs> Just start screaming up the Johns. <laughs> What's your biggest and pr most proudest achievement to date so far? Winning the Sports Presenter of the Year for a second year running. Yeah. yeah. And a close second? A uh, close second was getting the breakfast show. Okay. Being given the breakfast show to present. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Yeah, yeah, nice deep joy. Do you have any regrets? No. No. None whatsoever. No, I don't. I think about things that I could have done differently, but I think... They've led you to where you are. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you can have any regret. You're in a celebrity boxing match. Who do you want to have a punch-up with? Because you're doing your training. You will get roped into it. Jamie O'Hara. Jamie O'Hara, yeah? You reckon you could have him as well? Yeah, I do, actually. I think I'm a bit taller. Am I a bit taller than him? I feel like I'm... I reckon you've got the reach on him. Yeah, I think I've got longer arms. I reckon I've got a better reach. And I just think it would it would just make our working relationship so much better if we could just fight it out every now and then. Yeah, punch fuck out of yeah, each other. Yeah, then we'd be best friends again and it'd be fine. Yeah, I think so. Um, also, I mean, I've got a lot that follow me. Would you date a cabbie? Of course I'd date a cabbie. There you go. Free right, transport. Right. Can, I, can, I just, can I just say one thing? I need to get this in here. Yeah. So, a group of my pals, I've, I've only just become sort of pals with him over the last year. Play football with him, a lot of Arsenal, a lot of Spurs. It, mm. it's just, that is just what, what it is. They've got, they've told me, because I was telling them about my podcast, the In You Get podcast, and I said, oh, like the people I'm getting on, I told them about Jason Fox and, like, and other people. Okay. As soon as I said you, they were like, okay, right, can you let her know that we've got a Laura Woods appreciation group? What? They got a group. So their, their WhatsApp group is the Laura Woods appreciation group. So when you know, when you go out and do your things and whatever on yeah. Sky and whatnot, your picture will get posted. I'm not in the group, but your picture will get posted up and be like, look how beautiful she is. No, really? Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. People have asked, oh. what size are your feet? Seven. Seven. Well, actually, they're a six and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Why have I just told you that? <laughs> people, pe no. and they, they've also asked, I mean, this is a little private one for them, people have also asked, next season, will you come to an away game with them, me, everything's all laid on for you, including the Jager bombs? 
hundred percent. So that's how deep they know is about this, the Jaeger is this, ones. Is this the Laura Woods Appreciation yeah. Society? A hundred percent. I would cool. absolutely love to. Well organised. That would be amazing. Yes. And I'm like, wow, I can't even believe this is Laura Woods Appreciation Society. But thank you so much. That's right. Laura, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart coming on this. Oh, I, I appreciate it. it a lot. Thank you very, very it. much. We got there eventually, didn't we? Yes, eventually. We're planning for ages. Yeah, it's only been a couple of oh, couple of years. But I thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for you. having me. I loved it. This is probably the best interview I've done. How chill. But it's relaxed. Isn't yeah, it? it's nice. not you're not in you're not in charge of it. No, exactly. I thought it wasn't as scary as I thought it was gonna be. All Thanks right. for letting me bring my dog as well. No, that's right. So when yeah. I am in a studio environment, you're gonna come on as one of my guests there, yeah? Yeah, when are you coming on my show? I, I don't know if talks will allow me to come on. Why? I don't know, because I probably swear too much. Ch oh, Try and organise it. I can I'll mellow it down, you I can chill out, I can relax, so I've got management yeah. now. Have you really? Yeah, we'll have we'll have a oh, chat about that. Oh, he's gone big time. Yeah. I'll see you in Monaco next year, yeah? Yeah, I'll be driving the <laughs> riding the boat. No, sailing the boat. You'll be the, you'll be the sailor. Oh, I thought you're full of semen. Oh, God. <laughs> right, and on that note, get fucked in you get. Thank you very much. Cheers, all. Bye.